I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Thank you, Mr. President. Today, Madam Nakamitsu presented us with yet another 105th report of the Director General of the OPCW on the Implementation of Security Council Resolution 2118. Unfortunately, this report, like previous reports, is based on the same pattern and is geared towards achievement of the same goal, namely to create an impression about alleged Syrian inability to be constructive nor to cooperate. cooperate. In fact, however, Damascus continues to comply with its OPCW obligations and continues to actively engage with OPCW. I think that our Syrian colleagues today will describe in detail the work that has been done so that the Security Council has an opportunity to have a more objective vision of what is taking place. The reports of the Director General still prevent this from being achieved. Any progress achieved in cooperation with Damascus, for example, uh, the uh, decision to extend until the end of the year the tripartite decision between Syria, the OPCW, and UNOPS, either is, prevent, is portrayed as being in dot, a dotted line or is simply not mentioned at all. We repeatedly pointed to the, uh, the, the, the erroneousness of this approach during previous Security Council meetings on the Syrian chemical dossier. The picture has not changed. And in order to observe this, open meetings of the Security Council once every quarter is more than sufficient. Distinguished colleagues, uh, during today's meeting, we expected that we would see Mr. Arias, the Director General of OPCW, among the briefers. We have a significant list of questions still to him. We are grateful to the Brazilian presidency for having conveyed an invitation to the Director General. We understand that there many are on holiday in Europe at present. However, we expect that the Director General of OPCW will indeed find the time and have an opportunity to speak before the membership of the Security Council during the next meeting. For the moment, questions to him and the body he leads are not fewer in number. The, the majority of these questions continue to be linked to the egregious staging, uh, the, the uh, uh, misinformation the report of the FFM on the incident in Duma and uh, the per Persecution, persecution of those who are not afraid to speak the truth in this regard. We are surprised by other things as well. For example, we repeatedly drew attention to the following, that Mr. Arias, uh, during all of the years of his term, was unable to find the time to visit Syria personally. He eagerly visits other countries. For example, recently he visited the United States of America. The situation, however, with respect to Syria, his view is completely different. And yet, one cannot allege that this country is outside of the focus of the OPCW. Nearly one quarter of the comprehensive statement of Mr. Arias during the 100th session of the Executive Council on 5 July was specifically dedicated to the Syrian issue. Incidentally, in this statement that the OPCW Director General took the liberty of saying something quite odd. He noted that in any event, uh, there cannot be justification for his visit to a, member, a state party to the OPCW, which was stripped of its rights during the Conference of State Parties. We would be eager to know what uh, the Director General of the OPCW is guided by in making these kinds of statements. Logically, Mr. Arias, on the contrary, today should focus all efforts and undertake all efforts, including with regular visits to Damascus, in order to expeditiously turn this shameful page in the organization's history where for the benefit of Western representatives and in violation of the CWC norms, in violation of the principle of cons consensus, a state uh, was stripped of its rights, a state that had been conscientiously complying with its obligations under the convention. Possible, it is possible that shedding light on which norms prevent uh, Mr. Arias from visiting Syria, uh, which norms of the, OPC, of the CWC are preventing Mr. Arias from visiting Syria, is something which perhaps Madame Nakamitsa will provide us with information about. 
Another issue which time and again appears in the report as evidence of serious putative imaginary non-cooperability uh, is the, con uh, de the delay for more than a year for the conduct of the 25th round of consultations in the mission on the declaration of the initial assessment. Now, the fact that the, t the technical secretariat here is guided by the presumption of guilt of Syria is clear simply from the phrase that apparently the dis uh, resolution to this matter hinges apparently only on a change of attitude. The facts point to the opposite, actually. I will spell them out briefly. The Syrian side does not have and never had any principled objections against the conduct of these kinds of consultations. However, last June, the Director General of the OPCW, Mr. Arias, during a Security Council meeting himself said that he would be not ready to send the DAT to Syria in the summer due to a, quote, too hot temperatures, temperatures which are too hot. As a result, there was a major delay which arose. Syria later was willing to conduct consultations in The Hague. However, at that point, the Technical Secretariat refused to cover the expenditure for organizing the visit from experts. Then the situation was portrayed as the following, that uh, all bilateral cooperation between the Technical Secretariat and Syria is linked to a single OPCW expert without whose involvement no consultations apparently could be had. Then there was a discussion about carrying out the 25th round in Beirut. And the same expert was again included in the mission, a denial of which, of whose participation Syria, like any sovereign state, has every right to insist on. Now, Damascus once again demonstrated goodwill, having agreed as a temporary measure to continue to engage with the DAT in the format of exchange of documentation. However, it is clear that the problem is created not by Damascus, Damascus which has every right to refuse uh, any given expert from participating in the discussion of confidential issues, but rather DAT, the DAT which has created this and made this a matter of principle. At the same time, it is important to recall the following. Cooperation with the DAT is among the voluntary bilateral obligations which Syria itself assumed. The mandate of the DAT does not provide for any investigative activity. The purpose of it is simply to help the Syrian side draft its initial a, a declaration. However, for more than one year, what we have seen in the reports is a different approach, a different logic. Uh, more and more reasons being advanced for which allegedly the technical secret secretary is unable to achieve this. And Damascus has continued uh, to demonstrate unprecedented transparency and openness. Let us recall that Syria joined the CWC under exceedingly difficult circumstances of military political instability and the ter terrorist threats fueled from abroad. Despite all of this, Syria has conscientiously complied with all of the obligations that it assumed in this connection. This is something that the Secretary General reported about to the Security Council back in June 2014. And the fact of the definitive liquidation of Syria's military chemical capacity was confirmed in 2016 by the, OPC, uh, by the Executive OPCW Conference of States Parties uh, and Executive Council. There is no right uh, for any complicated demands to be advanced for verification vis-a-vis uh, -vis Syria. No, no right vested in the te technical secretariat in this regard. However, the differences in approach in this matter with respect to Syria and with respect to other countries facing similar issues are visible to the naked eye. Mr. President, the bias against Damascus is long-standing and often it is difficult to simply call this bias. Suffice it to recall the notorious report of the fact-finding mission on the incident in Duma in 2018. I've already mentioned that the final version of this report was 
was significantly redacted as compared to the initial version. And this was confirmed by various sources, including the former uh, inspectors of the OPCW itself, who participated directly in the investigation of, of this issue. The same applies for the activity of the illegitimate uh, identification and investigation team, the IIT, the creation of which was pushed through at the OPCW Executive Board uh, Council in violation of the principal consensus as well as Article 15 of the Chemical Weapons Convention. I wish once again to state that we reject any reports, current or future, of the IIT as a, an illegitimate product of an illegitimate structure. The purpose of them is not to uh, generate a genuine, uh, accurate picture of what has happened, but rather to shape its conclusions to fit the narrative of Damascus's guilt. The damaging methodology both of the IIT and the FFM directly violate the convention itself as a on the principle of investigation, first and foremost in terms of compilation, ensuring chain of con uh, compilation of evidence and ensuring chain of custody. We cannot take seriously any documents that are drafted on the basis of information that is collected remotely, retroactively, including from uh, verifiably unreliable sources, such as the White Helmets, who directly directly involved in the staging of chemical weapons incidents in, in the same Duma or Han Shehun. Others, m other more than pressing issues which uh, do not fit with the picture painted of alleged Syrian guilt against this backdrop are paid far less attention to. These include the threat of terrorists using chemical weapons on Syrian soil and in neighboring states. There is evidence of, the pre of terrorist groups in the Middle East having access to chemical warfare agents. The conclusions of the UN investigative team on accountability for crimes perpetrated by ISIL UNITED points to the fact that ISIL has a full-fledged military chemical program. However, any measures to counter these threats is something which con we continue to not hear anything about. Mr. President, we have repeatedly Riff pointed to the fact that the Western countries' politicization of the OPCW does damage to the chemical weapons uh, uh, prevention regime and undermines the ability of the organization to respond to real threats which are faced by the international community in the area of chemical non-proliferation. Uh, non let us recall that on 29 April, the Security Council adopted a presidential statement marking the 25th anniversary of the entry into force of the Chemical Weapons Convention. In it, we all confirmed that the OPCW needs to ensure uh, objective, independent, and professional compliance with all of the provisions of the Convention. I would call on our Western colleagues to finally transition from words to deed and to issue the perverse focus on exploiting the organization as a blind instrument to punish states which are inconvenient to them. To conclude, I would underscore that the leadership of the OPCW has every opportunity still to comply with its obligations in good faith, ensuring, as is set out explicitly in the Convention, a transparent and objective investigative process, uh, singling out, uh, separating, and distinguishing between staged incidents and imagined threats between those and real instances of chemical weapons use. To that end, there is a need to remedy the errors that have been made and to restore the spirit which had previously prevailed at the organization of professional apolitical cooperation on the basis of consensus. We trust that in short time, Mr. Arias will be in a position to personally share with the Security Council his plans to achieve that end. Thank you for your attention. I thank the representative of the Russian Federation for his statement.